Elizabeth at A Literary Princess and today I am doing another installment in my underrated Victorian recommendations series. So in this series I take three books from the Victorian era that I think are underrated and I recommend them to you. Sometimes they are by authors who are not very well known anymore. Other times they are by well-known authors but they are works that are more ignored in favor of the more popular ones. So today I have two underread authors for you and one author who's very well known, but I think these short stories by him are very underrated and I've never heard anyone talk about them outside of my one class where they were taught. So let's jump right in. First up, we have a book that I read earlier this year. This is A Sunless Heart by Edith Johnstone. This is a new woman novel published toward the end of the 19th century. It follows Gasparine O'Neill, yes, yes, you heard that correctly, as she goes through the grief of losing her brother and then meets this lecturer at the Women's College named Lotus Grace. And Gasparine becomes quite attached to Lotus in a relationship that can be read as lesbian. Lotus also has a relationship with another woman named Mona, who is one of her students. So this is interesting because of that, obviously. The female relationships that can be read as lesbian. There's also a lot to look at in here about trauma. Lotus has had a very traumatic childhood in, that involves sexual abuse. And that is really explored and the effect of it on her mind and her psychological state. There is also things about motherhood in here. This is just overall a very interesting book. I don't like, <laughs> I wasn't really sure if I liked it. I think I ultimately gave it three and a half stars because the structure is very odd and I don't think always works very well. But this is such an interesting book from the perspective of queer studies, from the perspective of looking at women working as professionals and as intellectuals in the 19th century, trauma studies, so many interesting things. So it is one that I highly recommend checking out. So the next one is by our well-known author, but I think these short stories deserve a little bit more recognition than they get. So we are talking about Rudyard Kipling today. Yeah, obviously he is not unknown. He wrote the Jungle Books. When you have a Disney movie made of your, of your book, you are probably not underrated. However, I personally, before getting to my PhD, didn't really know that he wrote anything other than the Jungle Books. And I was introduced in my first year to three short stories that I found really fascinating, that I had never heard of before, and that I have never heard anyone talk about since. So these short stories can be referred to as like colonial gothic. And they are The Strange Ride of Morby Jukes, The Mark of the Beast, and The Return of Imre. So they are all dealing with English men in colonial India who get into these supernatural-esque situations that are very gothic and very creepy. Actually, I wrote a paper on the three of these because they also, they all involve animals and the animals kind of become a signifier of which characters are considered human and which characters kind of lose their humanity. It's very interesting. I won't go into all that. Two of these, The Return of Imre and The Mark of the Beast, follow this character Strickland. And then Moral B. Jukes is unrelated. I just think these are really fun, first of all, gothic stories. Now, of course, anything that was written in colonial India and about colonial India, there is going to be some racism here. There's imperialism colonialism. It's here. There are some parts of this that are uncomfortable and I know that a lot of people have problems with Kipling because of that and I completely understand that. However, what's very interesting is that frequently in these stories Kipling is 
critiquing colonialism while also engaging with it, which is just a super fascinating thing to see. It's also just interesting to see the Gothic taken outside of its usual English or European setting and how it can work in colonial India. I do think these short stories are highly worth it. Yes, you need to go into them knowing there's some uncomfortable things here, but so much to analyze here and they are just enjoyable to read. Also, The Return of Imre features this wonderful dog. Ah, her name is, I think, Tietjens. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but she is Strickland's dog and she is just marvelous and such a good girl. So I do highly recommend these short stories. You can find them for free online. They're not very long. I actually, only two of them are in here. The Return of Emre is not in here, this collection, but I needed something to hold up, so you know. But yeah, definitely worth checking out. And then the last one I do not have a physical copy of because it is on my Kindle. This is The Beth Book by Sarah Grand. It is another new woman novel, and it is a, let's see if I can pronounce this correctly, Kunstel Roman, meaning a story of the artist's coming of age and a person becoming an artist. So this follows Beth Caldwell, who we start with as a very precocious child and we follow into her adulthood through a failed marriage in her journey to become a writer. The book is heavily autobiographical. Beth Caldwell is just an amazing character seeing her grow from a child to an adult and go through all these changes is fantastic. Grand does an amazing job with it and it's just highly worth the read and should be more well known than it is. It is very long. I will say that Sarah Grand did not write short books. However, it is completely worth it. I had such a wonderful time with this. There is so much to analyze. And to look at in conjunction with other more famous Victorian works, such as Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, which also follows a woman trying to become a writer. And as I said, Beth Caldwell is just such an amazing character. I would say that especially in childhood, she is comparable to Maggie Tulliver from The Mill on the Floss. It is just a joy to see what she gets into as a child. Things become more serious in tone once she gets to adulthood, of course, but it is also a joy to watch her become a writer. So those are the three works of underrated Victorian fiction that I have to recommend today, or I guess technically five because I counted three short stories as one, whatever, it's fine. I can do what I want. This is my series. <laughs> so let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think? What are some of your favorite underrated Victorian reads? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.